What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So if you're in the market for a new to you iPhone, maybe you have an iPhone 7 or 8 or 10 or 10s, I'm gonna make the case that the iPhone 11 is probably the iPhone to buy right now. And yes, that's even though we're likely a month away from the next newest iPhones being released. I'll also say that if you have an iPhone 11 right now, don't bother upgrading. This phone, in my opinion, has another five to seven years of life and support ahead of it at least. And compared to the iPhone 12 or iPhone 13, or even the rumored 14s, I don't think you'll be missing out on much. And to keep this phone or any other smartphone safe, I would definitely recommend throwing on a case to Fi case, not just because they were kind enough to sponsor this video, but because they also have the widest selection of colors and designs available, and their cases give you all the best possible protection for your device. case to Fi sent over a few of their different cases here. There's a couple of their pre-made styles and a couple custom ones I made myself. These are their Impact and Ultra Impact cases, and like the name suggests, they are specifically designed to take a beating. No matter what style you choose, all of Case Device cases are made from high quality, impact absorbing material that's friendly for the environment too. Some of their phone cases are made from other recycled phone cases and other plant-based materials. The prints and designs are also a high quality finish, bold, bright, detailed, and made to last. But the most important part is that their impact cases are designed to handle greater than a six foot drop. And the ultra impact cases can handle nearly a 10 foot fall. The secret is the shock absorbing Chi Tech 2.0 inner lining that's rated for three times the military grade standard for protection. And on the ultra impact cases, even more protection on all four corners of the phone, which is perfect for those particularly unlucky impacts. Also, it's no secret that your smartphone can get kind of gross, but Casetify thought of that too. The cases have an additional antimicrobial coating, non-toxic, but that kills 99% of bacteria. From start to finish, Casetify offers just fun, unique, and most importantly, ultra protective cases for a bunch of smartphones and other devices. And if you're interested, head on over to Casetify com slash techdailyyt or click the link in the video description for 15% off one of their unique styles. Thanks so much again to Casetify for sponsoring this video. So the iPhone 11 to me hits that sweet spot across years and years of iterations of iPhones. It's much more current than anything pre-10R, but it's not so new that it commands an eye-watering price tag. In fact, I actually think the iPhone 11 has hit the bottom of its depreciation curve already, which is my first big reason in recommending it. And I don't really see it falling any further in price, at least not quickly even with those new phones on the horizon. Renewed or secondhand from places like Amazon, Swappa, eBay, Plug Tech, and Swap Club, this is now a 350 ish dollar device. And to get any modern smartphone for that is a steal, but especially an iPhone. The iPhone 12 by comparison is still well into the $400 range renewed. And some places are still selling it brand new for 600 or $700 that's gonna be a no for me. But if you wanna check out those good iPhone 11 deals, I'll leave some links in the video description below. What I also like about the iPhone 11 is it looks just as good and as new as when it was first released a few years ago. And we obviously have Apple to thank for that with their perpetual renewal of this same exact design. For folks looking for a deal on yesteryear's iPhone, you're still getting a modern premium Apple product with a glass and aluminum build that rivals what anyone else might pay three times as much money for on a brand new one. And hardly anyone would notice which iPhone is which anyway. But I also figure this as a reason why iPhones don't depreciate as hard and as fast as some other devices. From the 10R to today, aside from the camera module design and color choices, these iPhones all look the same, but they all still look good. Perhaps the single biggest reason though to consider an iPhone 11, whether you're buying one for the first time or keeping it for a few more years, is the iOS update support. You can debate me all you want on this, but this is also where iOS has a huge advantage over Android. This phone will get iOS 16, which should launch sometime later this fall. And with that, you'll receive a myriad of new features and apps and settings and things that all the new iPhone 14s will get too. But that honestly also just make older iPhones like this one still feel current and new. The user experience of an iPhone 11 won't really be any different from a thousand dollar iPhone 14. And keep in mind, this one shipped with iOS 13. If this were any old Android device, three years of software updates would likely be its limit. And this phone would get no new major updates moving forward and fewer and fewer security patches. But Apple has shown they're willing to support iPhones for at least six full years with major iOS updates. And I suspect with as powerful as these current iPhones are, 
they could extend that even longer. That means this iPhone 11 may very well be less than halfway through its supported life cycle, with four or five years of support left, maybe more. That makes this phone, which is already a few years old, a weirdly solid long-term investment. And I know what you're thinking. Don't new iOS updates make older iPhones slower? Well, Apple did get in trouble for supposedly throttling their older devices as a way to force people to upgrade, but they're not allowed to do that anymore. More. And you have to take into consideration the somewhat sad fact that the latest and greatest iPhones aren't that much more powerful year over year anymore. From the iPhone 11 to the iPhone 12 to the iPhone 13, Apple didn't make massive changes to their Bionic processor. The differences were measured in the 20 to 40% range. So none of these phones are like twice as fast as they once were. Apple can pack in all the new software tweaks they want, but in my opinion, you're just not going to experience poor performance with these new iOS updates like you used to with like an iPhone 6S, iPhone 7, or iPhone 8. In fact, I'm willing to bet that during average day-to-day -day use, you likely won't be able to tell the difference in performance between any iPhone sold in the past three years. Furthermore, Apple is even rumored to be reusing last year's chipsets on this year's new iPhone 14s, with some slight improvements, sure, but they themselves don't even seem to be prioritizing huge processing and performance gains anymore. And I think the reason for that is there's just not much more that can be done with a smartphone to make it any more powerful. Have we reached peak performance? Maybe. And to me, that just means any iPhone from the last couple of years is gonna be just as good as any new iPhone. Case in point, this iPhone 11. One point that I think people will try to make is that camera tech has evolved more than anything else on smartphones nowadays. And that's true. Apple has put more effort into the camera setup on their latest phones year over year than pretty much anything else. But for most people, the camera setup on the iPhone 11 isn't just fine, but it's comparable to even my iPhone 13 Pro in certain situations. I like the iPhone 11 in particular over something like the 10R because of its secondary wide angle lens. I think that opens up a lot more possibilities for different scenes. And actually from the 10R to the 11 specifically, pictures as a whole do look better. But side by side against my 13 Pro, well, you can definitely tell which is which, even unlabeled here, the iPhone 11 isn't that much worse. With the right conditions, good lighting, straightforward subject, the 11 takes solid pictures for sure. And I think most everyday users will be more than happy. Sure, you don't get any fancy schmancy pro features, and yes, objectively, the current iPhones capture way more detail. They're better balanced with their exposure, and the biggest thing is night mode. That's where Apple seems to have made the most dramatic improvements, low light conditions. But the iPhone 11 isn't some fuzzy potato camera. It's solid today and will continue to be a solid camera setup for most people for years to come. It's really easy to get all caught up in the camera tech stuff nowadays, but when you really take a step back and compare, the progress and improvements aren't as dramatic as a company like Apple would lead you to believe, at least not for everyday users. While I'm personally always excited to get the latest and greatest iPhones, I know that objectively, spending $1,000 on a new device year after year just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. iPhones especially have remained relatively unchanged for a while. And because of that, opting for one that's a couple of years old is not just a great money-saving decision, but you'll likely be getting the same basic experience anyway. And it's still an investment, so to speak, because I don't see Apple canceling support on this phone anytime soon. If you have an older iPhone and hope to spend, say, 350 to 400 bucks on something right now, the iPhone 11 would be my pick today, tomorrow, six months from now, and beyond. And if you have an iPhone 11, keep it for a while. Keep it for three more years at least. You're really not gonna miss out on much. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on the iPhone 11. As I see it, it's the best option out there for most people. But what do you guys think? Which iPhone would you buy right now? If any, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later.